So the image behind me spells the word Bowie using components of a black star. And Black Star was the title of David Bowie's last album. So what's sort of really fascinating for me is just this really cool statement. There's a lot of different opinion about what the Black Star metaphorically means. And it being his last album, it was a statement from him. It was an expression. So the overarching theme of my talk today is really about expression, the process of making known one's thoughts or feelings. And there are sort of three different aspects of that. So one, obviously, it's the natural language analysis of Bowie's personas. So it's appreciating his genius, his expression through you know, the visual iconic images he made and the, the songs that he wrote. But the sort of more interesting application of it is understanding the expression from our clients. Because we're on the cusp of being able to um, appreciate our clients, our users, in a way, on a grand scale, individually, for the first time, using natural language analysis, using uh, their text and their words, their conversations as a way of understanding them. And then the third sort of element of expression is through digital creativity. So at this point in time, we're used to seeing really great data journalism, data science, um, user experience, design, and really cool programming languages that let us express ourselves as creative um, people, as digitally creative people. So when I think of Bowie, I think of these amazing um, iconic images that he, he made, these characters that he gave us throughout his career, constantly changing. So Ziggy Stardust, Aladdin Sane, the Thin White Duke in the middle, Piero the Clown, and Lazarus at the end, just examples of, of Bowie's personas. When he died, or when I heard that he died earlier, at the beginning of the year, I was, um, I was really surprised. I was really surprised that he died, but I was really most of all surprised at how I felt about it. I didn't know him, I'm not the world's biggest Bowie fan, but I felt a loss. I felt something changed, something missing. And I reflected on it quite a lot. I was watching concerts on YouTube and interviews on YouTube. And I realized that it was his songs. It was some of the songs that he had written. Um, I have really clear, strong memories of listening to Annie Nightingale on BBC Radio 1 when I was a teenager, revising for exams, playing absolute beginners. I've got really strong memories of seeing Bowie playing the opening chords of Space Oddity at an open-air concert in the north of London when I was an intern on a really warm summer's day amongst friends. So it's the music, it's the songs, and it's the connection that those songs had. It made me think of people, it made me think of times, and it made me think of loss. And the more I thought about it, the more I sort of wanted to understand Boy, and understand more about these personas and his changes through time. And it struck me that when, when he was in each of these eras, um, when each of these characters was his focus, was his mind also focused? Was his mind also changed to write lyrics in a certain way, to think about the themes and the music that he was, that he was making? Um, so I had this brainwave of taking his albums so for each persona, he had an album or associated albums, taking the lyrics from those albums and p playing them through natural language um, analysis software. And IBM has this software called Watson. Um, they used it a few years ago to win Jeopardy. Natural language analysis software can take written words and make sense of it, for, while a computer can make sense of it, either the emotional tone of it, it can pick out the emotions, or in this case, it can give a psychological profile based on what's written down there. And so using this approach, I thought I could get almost like an identity for each of these personas based on the, the lyrics and the music. So Watson Personality Insights uses this theory from psychology called the Big Five Personality Traits. So openness is the measure of creativity, Conscientiousness is a measure of organization, self-discipline, 
Extroversion versus introversion is how much you project outwardly versus inwardly. Agreeableness is your ability to cooperate and to work with others. And neuroticism is more about your self-focus. So the software can take text and break it into percentages, given a percentage of each of the, the measures of these big five traits. So rather than talk about it, I'll show you the app that I built using it. So it's a pretty simple app. It's based around these personas. I, I drew each of these sketches um, based on research. I made a Pinterest board and, and started collecting photographs of Bowie, um, trying to identify on a, time, on a time span when each of these personas existed, the albums that he recorded during that time. I read about him and researched each of these personas. And I wanted to draw them in a way where they were pretty consistent so that you're just looking at the changes over time that he's making. And I wanted it to look like a storybook so that someone who wasn't really familiar with David Bowie could come along and see this is the timeline, this is how he changed over time. So when I click on one of these different persona characters, it will take me to a, a sort of breakdown of the personality traits of that individual persona. And the way that I present it is in the form of a mock Twitter page. Because I thought I wanted it to, to be colorful and interesting. I didn't want to present like dry um, data in, in the form of like pie charts or bar charts. And what better way to emphasize the fact that they're individual personas than with a social media account for each of them. And I was pretty faithful to the template that Twitter sort of lays out. I, you know, I have a little description. The location is where the album was recorded. Uh, the time is the, instead of when they joined Twitter, it's the time frame of when the albums were recorded. And then there's some album art in there. In each of the tweets, it has one of those big five personality traits. So there's an openness tweet, a conscientiousness tweet, and so on. And they're depicted in the form of Sankey diagrams. So the way that Watson gives you this data is that it has the big five characteristics as percentages, but there are in-feeding um, attributes of each of those big five things. So for example, openness has imagination, adventurousness, intellect, authority challenging, artistic interests, and emotionality. So you, you end up with maybe 20 or 30 different data points of, you know, to analyze the psychology of that written text. Over here, there's a histogram plotting the percentage um, of each of them, of the openness, conscientiousness, and we're all in the spectrum for whatever way we present ourselves through psychology. You can navigate to the other different characteristics in the who to follow area. So I can click on one of them and look at a different um, persona. So that's pretty interesting. But where it perhaps gets a little bit more interesting is comparing them. So the internet's a little bit slow here. There we go. So there are five tiles here, one for each uh, personality trait. And in each of the tiles, it's given a measure over time of how that personality trait is changing. So what's really cool about that is it's watching how your, a personality is changing over time. So if we look at it in this form, it's how David Bowie's lyrics are changing over time. You can see in the openness um, chart that it's pretty consistent in the sort of 80th, 90th percentile for the sort of duration of his career. But there's a marked dip in 1975. And that's reflected also in the agreeableness chart. Um, there's a marked spike in 1975. And he's not at all agreeable. He was notoriously not an agreeable person. There's a great Guardian article, 10 things Bowie turned down. So he turned down his knighthood, for example. He turned down collaboration with Chris Martin from Coldplay and so on. Um, but it's curious, you know, this, this date, this 1975, why, what makes that so special? So I put a little toggle in to let you compare persona by persona. And that, that corresponds to the Thin White Duke era. And that, after doing some reading, some research, is when Bowie was at his lowest point. He had major drug addictions with cocaine. 
he was actually living in here in Los Angeles. Um, it's the Thin White Duke era. He was recording things like Young Americans, Fame. And he got clean after that, so he went to Germany for the Berlin Trilogy. And I think the, his only vice up until 2002 was smoking cigarettes. So it was pretty curious that that, that dip comes there, and I'm connecting dots. I don't know really what happened. But if you read Wikipedia, Bowie himself said that the Thin White Duke was a nasty character, and it was a very dark period for him. If we look at some of the other characteristics, so for example, the extroversion, um, this one surprised me a little bit. So visually, I thought Ziggy Stardust and Pierrot were two of the most um, sort of visually extrovert characters. But lyrically, they were the most introverted based on the analysis that Watson did. And in contrast to that, Lazarus was lyrically the most extrovert uh, of the characters. And that surprised me too. I thought he wrote Lazarus in the context of knowing that he was, he was dying. So I thought he would have been more sort of self, uh, self-interested, more introverted in, in that time. But as it turns out, Lazarus, the album, was a statement, was a, an art form, a departure, and a gift, a final gift from Bowie to his fans. So obviously he had a lot to say, and it, it sort of, in reflection, makes sense that it was extrovert. So that's just some of the, sort of dipping into some of the, the different um, analysis. I put a picker in there as well so that you can start to look at some of the different um, in-feeding attributes as well. So again, you can see in the conscientiousness, the thin white duke um, has a spike for orderliness compared with the others. So we go back into the app again. So this is a Python app. It's running on, on Bluemix. Bluemix is um, IBM's cloud platform. The last sort of piece of it is I can enter a, a Twitter ID. So code conf. And what it will do is it'll go read tweets from that Twitter account and run those tweets through personality insights and then map them to the closest matching Bowie persona. So this shows you that just based on sort of psychological profiles and natural language analysis, not only can you start to analyze uh, the psychology behind text, but you can also start to target it and make decisions on it. So this sort of touches on that idea of being able to automatically have responses based on a person's personality type. So here, CodeConf is most matching the Bowie of modern love. So Bowie's at his, Bowie at his brightest and most poppiest. Maybe it's sort of appropriate. Um, the orange, uh, draw, the orange lines in the radar chart represent CodeConf. You can see that CodeConf's conscientiousness is stronger than the Bowie characters, yet the emotional range is lacking. <laughs> um, so that's just a sort of a, a test of the, of the app. If we get back into the presentation. So like I was saying, this is a, a Python app. Um, Watson Personality Insights is something that you can access through Bluemix. Bluemix is a, a lot like Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud, except it, it also has, it allows you to run your software, but also has access to lots of services like the Cognitive Services and Watson. Uh, cognitive computing sounds like a big deal, but it's actually only one line of code. It's a one-line call to get those personality insights by passing in a, a bunch of text. The trouble is you get back a ton of data, and it's turning that into some kind of visualization where it starts to become more, more interesting. For me, um, I've got a background in design and development. Um, one of the more troubled areas I have whenever I'm working with something is picking colors. Um, but twice a year, Pantone give us this amazing gift. In spring and fall, they offer colors of the year. And so this is my, my tip to you if you don't know about it and you're interested in picking colors. All of the Bowie characters were faithfully colored from this palette. So what I did was in the, all of the photographs that I took and pinned to the Pinterest board, I matched them to those colors. And they work seamlessly together. The, the color experts have figured out a way for you to not make mistakes when combining them. 
Um, I'm really, really strongly opinionated about the use of libraries <laughs> in web development. So all of the app was built using just flex boxes. There's no bootstrap. There's no other web framework. It's just pure vanilla JavaScript. Um, I love working with flex boxes. It's a revelation for me to actually be able to lay out um, web pages properly um, for the first time. It's a joy to be able to use them. If, if you're not familiar with them, again, that's my, my tip to you is to learn them because it makes development so much more fun. I also think that there's a real uh, tight knitness between the data driving the app, the content behind it, and the flex boxes that present it. There's a sort of really simple information model behind this app as well. So there's a database of personas, a database of albums, and a database of songs. Every persona has one to n albums. An album is really just a list of songs, and the songs are in a, the lyrics of the songs are in a database. This is a sort of JSON model for a persona. Uh, it's not really rocket science, but it sort of is the, the life and soul of the whole app in that you know the sketches that I did, this, the scale of actor graphics sketches are marked in there, the start and end points of each of the personas. Um, a little description, and then, of course, the albums and the Wikipedia links in there. So that sort of draws it back to that notion of um, expression. Um, so the app itself helped me process my feelings, like writing the app helped me process my feelings of, um, of David Bowie dying and how, what the songs meant to me over time. Um, it felt appropriate when I saw this quote that tomorrow belongs to those who can hear it coming. I'm really strongly opinionated that we're entering this era of being able to personalize our apps and really make them talk to individuals uh, using this kind of technology, this kind of natural language recognition technology. So I thought this was a really perfect quote. And all of this stuff that I showed you is open source. You can get to it from this repo. Um, this is the IBM Bluemix um, Teams repo as well, so there's lots of other stuff in there. Um, although I use Python, the Personality Insights software runs in there are Node APIs and Swift APIs and Java APIs and RESTful ones, so it, it's pretty easy to use for other applications. You can play with the app itself at ziggy.mybluemix.net. And um, if you want to contact me or ask any questions or have any uh, comments, I'm at Anton MC. I just want to say thanks to the GitHub team and to Brittany for inviting me here, and thanks for your time today. Thanks a lot.